Good evening. I'm Vince from Asian Pacific Community Awareness, and we're here this afternoon uh, to interview a good buddy of mine and also a, a veteran, Sam Peters, who's running for Cong Congressional District 4. Sam, good evening. Good evening. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Um, first, let me ask, what made you run for political office? You have your own business. You have a great family. Uh, it takes a lot out of a person and a lot of pressure on a family when you want to get into politics. The, the, easiest, the easiest way to explain it is that our country is worth it. Um, I know you're a veteran, um, you've, you've shed blood for our country, uh, and thank you for your service. Um, I spent 20 years fighting for our country, you know, and, and, it's, and it's, I've seen places around the world uh, where people People in America often take for granted what we have. Um, I've seen some of the places in the world that, that we don't we don't want to become, uh, and I see us going down that road. I see the Democrats in, in uh, across our country. Um, you know, I, I tell people all the time. I spent 20 years in the military. I didn't think I was coming home to fight socialism, and that's reality at this point. So I, I stepped up, like you said. I've got a great family. I've got a great business, and those I have those because that's what America affords. The yes. world, uh, and I, I'm not going to sit back and just watch it disappear and watch Democrats uh, try and uh, turn our country into um, something that the forefathers wouldn't wouldn't agree with. Well, I agree with you because you know I've been in China for 14 years and just came back in 2015. And being in the military, I traveled around also, so I've seen the same things you have seen. And when I came back here, I could not believe this was the America I left. Right. Right. No, exactly. You know, we, we fight for our Constitution. We fight for our brothers and sisters in arms with us. Uh, we fight for the American dream. And then uh, you come back and, and you're looking at open borders. You're looking at, you know, two million people coming across the border. And, 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 you, and then you have people in Washington, uh, the swamp, and these they're, they're taking tax dollars and, and sending it over to the places that we're fighting against. Well, uh, let so me, it's, it's, let, sorry, let me no, ask you change. a question. Uh, concerning uh, illegal aliens, and I will never say undocumented because they're not undocumented, right. they're, illegal. they're illegal. They have committed a crime by crossing the border. Um, you're going to be in, in the Senate representing Nevada. What is your view on amnesty for all? No. So the House of Representatives is where I'll be as, as a congressman oh, for District congressman. 4. Yep, that's okay. Um, so Congress, District 4, amnesty is not an option. Okay, like you said, the people that are here illegally are here illegally. They broke the law. They broke. Uh, they, they've shown initial entry into the country illegally shows complete disrespect for all of our laws, not just the ones that are coming in in the country. So, uh, amnesty for all, absolutely not. No question. No question about it. Uh, we need to start deporting people. No question. So, what about the DACA group? So, I, I have people in my district who are who fall under the DACA group. Okay? There's a young man I, I spoke to in uh, Lyon County last year. Um, he, he has known nothing about anywhere else but America. He came here with his parents when they when he was three years old. And he, he had no say in the matter whatsoever. He went through school here. He speaks perfect English. In fact, doesn't speak Spanish. Uh, he's played on uh, on college, our, uh, high school football teams. He is an American. Uh, but it's incumbent on him to do something about that. It's incumbent on him, and it's incumbent on the federal government to have a process for those folks of, of going through the, of the citizenship uh, process. It's, it's not a freebie, and for far too long we've allowed lots and lots of people to think it's a freebie, and it's not. Freedom is not free in any sense. So would you agree to having some sort of uh, plan for the DACA group to be put on a pathway to citizenship? I, I think there needs to be, for a segment of the group, I think there needs to be a one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, again, no blanket amnesty whatsoever. Right. The people who have, who have who came here illegally as adults and have been here for a long, long time, they need to go back to where they came from. Um, the kids, the young, you know, and, and to, to define it, we need to go a lot deeper into the weeds, but, you know, the kids like I described, if he came here when he was three years old with a with his family, the family came here illegally. The three-year-old had no say in the matter, so there needs to be a process. Yes, I agree. Um, you hear everybody talking about the deep state. 
What is going to prevent you from becoming part of the deep state when you get to Congress? My love for this country, uh, the Lord that I serve, and the family that I go home to every night. And are you willing to guarantee or sign a contract to the American people that you will not become part of the deep state? One hundred percent. I will sign that contract. I have, again, I'm a term limits guy. Uh, I'm I'm not uh, I'm I'm in this for the right reasons. I do not. I have no illusions of grandeur of going to Washington D.C. and spending the rest of my life there. That is not my style. I grew up in I grew up in northern Maine in the woods. I like the open <laughs> woods. <laughs> so. So how would you represent Nevada in Washington? Uh, so I, I'd represent them uh, as best I could, obviously, but I would do it. I would do it in their voice. I've traveled the district, uh, as you know, extensively, talking to everybody that will listen or will listen or has a story to tell. Uh, I've I've talked with uh, county commissioners, city planners, county planners to see what's going on around the district and what we can do for a better Nevada, whether it's, you know, within the economy, uh, the immigration issues, mining is a big issue, yes. uh, uh, ranching and all of that across the district. So you know, I have to, you have to represent the people that you want, that, that want representation. Uh, and we're missing that right now. Uh, we don't have representation in Washington, D.C. Um, so I will, how will I do it? I'll take the people's voice to Washington, D.C. and vote that conscience. You know that uh, I've started this uh, group called Asian Pacific Community Awareness. Could you say something directly to the Asian community, how you will represent them specifically in Congress? So the Asian community, Hispanic community, um, the American community, the citizens of this country are, are uh, should be represented under the Constitution. And to the Asian community, I will represent you fairly. I will represent you under the Constitution. I will promote business. I know Asian uh, Asian people believe in a in a, a market, a free market, uh, and capitalism, uh, and we will pr we will promote that as best we can. Um, and you know, under the Constitution, your rights will be protected. Uh, that's what I vow. What's your opinion about the discrimination in Harvard towards Asian students? The discrimination in Harvard against Asian students. Um, I, I think what was happening in in uh, was it in Harvard? They were uh, was it they were promoting the, the Asians into Harvard, or was it the opposite? No, I'm not, it was I'm the not opposite. opposite. They they were complaining that the uh, Asian students are too smart. They get in, mm -hmm. uh, not allowing. U.S. citizens to get in and so on. Right. Well, so any discrimination is unlawful, first of all. Um, so from the Asian Asian side of it, whether it's African American, um, Hispanic, uh, Im Im uh, it's it's illegal. First of all, the, the, um, the 1964 Civil Rights Act says you don't discriminate on those things. Uh, and if it's happening, uh, I'll fight back. Uh, in fact, it's happening in Congress right now uh, with organizations like the Congressional Black Caucus. It's a federal organization, and it's based on the color of skin. Uh, and my opponent is the vice chair of it. So uh, I'll fight back against racism, I promise you that. Um, <clears throat> would you say a few words in closing? Sure. So in, in closing, I thank you again, uh, Vince, for having me. I appreciate uh, anybody that's watched this video. Um, you can reach out to me on my website at sampeters, the number four, congress.com. Again, sampeters, four, congress.com. I'm running in Congressional District 4, which is basically the northern third of Clark County and then some of the rural counties uh, north of uh, Clark. Uh, I'd appreciate your vote on June 14th and then again in November uh, for the general election. I look forward to serving you uh, with distinction, with honor, and with respect. Yes, and uh, in closing, I'd just like to remind everyone that it is necessary to get out and vote, especially all you new citizens. This is the power you have to change what goes on in this country, unlike in any other country that you've come from. Our voice, the voice of the American people, is the voice to be heard and to change what happens. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.